Chapter 21 The Magic of Time Everybody should know how to make time from magic. I know there are other things to think about, like shopping, parties, motoring trips, the cinema, a theatre show, dinner with the Joneses, exercises to keep fit, books to read, the garden to be dug, the attic to clear out, and never a minute to call your own. But every magician needs time, and to achieve magic in this life, you must make time. You must make time for meditation every day, that is certain. You must make time to speak to your subconscious. You must make time to listen, and you must make time to look at the pictures you have pasted in your book of the things you want. And you must make time to read those words I am writing over and over and over again, until they become a very real part of you. Oh yes, you can always make time to do the thing you want to do, if you want it enough. You can make time for meditation if you are determined to work magic. You can make time to go to your private retreat now and again. You can make time to turn over the pages of your scrapbook if you want the things enough. And by the power of visualization, you can make by comparison the transformation of Cinderella's pumpkin into a glass carriage child's play. Time. There has never been enough of it. The sad little phrase of our age is, I haven't had time to think. Time is the most magical thing. You must make it somehow. Once at Mr. So-and-so's house, I discovered in the bathroom a chart on which was printed horizontally the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on, and under each day was listed every single article of clothing Mr. So-and-so was going to put on that day. It was Monday. I glanced at the chart and I knew I should see Mr. So-and-so the next morning wearing a blue double-breasted suit, blue and white striped tie, grey socks with red clocks, black oxfords, great top coat flung carelessly over his arm, carelessly. Until I devised this chart, he said to me, I wasted five whole minutes in my bath each morning deciding what suit to wear. He paused and fixed the eye of success upon me. I advise you to put that in your book, five whole minutes. Tell them to do the same. I know many men and women who are convinced that to look smart and to change your clothes frequently is a sure way to prosperity. Never to wear the same clothes twice to the meeting or party you last went to. And these people keep a similar chart on the inside of their wardrobe door. Sounds silly? Perhaps. But little things like this save five minutes here and five minutes there, and in the day could save an hour. Yes, it may sound idiotic, far-fetched and stupid to you. It may even sound vain. But it is one of the things tycoons and successful people do in order to make time. When you are a busy person with loads of work to get through and a lot of calls to make, you organize time. You have to do all manner of strange things to make time in order to save minutes which over a day, a week, a month and a year can amount to hours and hours saved. Ah, you say, I haven't all those clothes. No, but you will, won't you? When you know how to bring the magic out of your mind, and you can apply this system to other things, even the chores. I know a successful hostess who keeps a book specially who keeps a book specially for writing down the menu she prepares for her guests the last time they came to dinner, what they like and what they don't like. When she is entertaining, she does not waste time wondering what to get or if they will like it, or if she is repeating what they had before. She has a, become a hostess with time on her hands. How quickly the time passes. It is a feeling which assails us all. Time. There has never been enough of it. The sad little phrase of our age is, I haven't had time to think. There does not seem time to do half the things you want to do. The day is gone. You have no time. Why? Time is the most magical thing. You must get it somehow. You must make it. Hazlitt says, Like a clown at a fair, we are full of amazement and rapture, and have no thoughts of going home, or that it will soon be night. Ah, 
make the most of what we yet may spend, sang the ancient Persian poet and philosopher. Omar's philosophy must be your philosophy. Go out for today. The day will seem much, much longer, getting away from the sameness, the routine. It will lengthen your day. Give yourself plenty of days, outings. Life will be longer, or seem longer to you. It's being glued to one spot, doing the same thing day after day that makes time go so quickly. Sameness kills. That way madness lies. Many a tycoon takes the day off to go away somewhere and have a quiet reflection on the problems of being alive. But I can't spare the time, you say. How often I have heard that. Yet time must be found for healthy relaxation, for learning to do magic, for thinking. Making time for these things is absolutely essential. Your days may be one long rush, bustle and bustle from dawn till dark, but it doesn't get you there in the end. It doesn't bring you magic, it brings you a nervous breakdown. Just as it takes a pianist a long time to become a padder whiskey, and there must be long training before one can breed pedigree dogs or race horses, so must there be long training if you want to become a perfect and clever magician. You have to make sacrifices in order to make the time required. What most of us want is a plan for more time to get well. A plan which will put new life and vigour into your backbone, a flash in your eye, a spring in your step. You should have a programme for this and a chart for that, so that not a moment is wasted. You must have a sufficiency of fresh air and deep breathing, the two things so necessary if you would be strong and fit, in a physical state, to work magic. You cannot bring magic out of a sick mind. You have to be well first. A sick person can help themselves get better by right thinking, but you must be fit if it's magic you want. Others may fall around you like leaves or be mowed down like flowers by the side of time, but it's not until you see the best of your health fading and your own pleasures and power cut up by the roots that you really begin to think. You should commence, first of all, by going carefully through your usual day's programme to see what time is wasted. Everybody wastes time, except the few who are time conscious. There are things you have been meaning to do for years. A language to learn, a dress to make, promotion to earn, music to improve, that alterna alteration in the attic, the top room to be done out, the long list of jobs, the garden, etc., etc., that game of bridge with the smiths each week. Why not make it a fortnightly meeting? You can save an evening there. The minutes you can save, the minutes you save can be put to good purpose, the purpose of attaining a powerful positive mind. You may even be able to cut out a meal once a week by having high tea or late dinner only and skipping the tea. The half hour or so you save on one meal instead of two can be much better used recharging your battery. No time is a weak need excuse. You must know how to control time, how to leave time each day for the exhilarating practice of deep breathing. You must not be time's fool. There beyond those curtains lies the garden, a beautiful place for fresh air and quiet in the very early morning, but you hardly ever see it, at least not at that time. You turn over on the other side and go to sleep again. There has been no time for anything, anything but playing football or filling in your pools. Make an effort to rise earlier, and once having mastered that ordeal, you could spare time before breakfast to do some of the things you have long wanted to do. There is nothing worse than to keep on chanting, I must do so and so, I must do, I must, I must. One day I must, then follows the famous alibi, but I never seem to have the time. Life is to act, and not to do is death. There must be action, and you must act now. The clock is ticking its way towards eternity and your end, so why go on tired and worn out? A failure? It is not how long you have lived that matters, or how much longer you are going to live, but whether you are alive at all now. Why not commence this very day to grow stronger and more radiantly happy, by making time for magic, 
there is a difference between mere existence and life. I know a lot of people who are going to get married when they have the time. They are going to write a letter, going to sing a song, going to write a song, going to say a prayer, going to travel, going to do this and that when they have the time. It is the farthest they will ever get because every day the opportunity comes to them and they pass it on. There are people belonging to a certain school who walk around the room of the tip of their toes, describing a circle in the air with their hands as they say, I am going to travel right around the world. They make the circle with their arms. I am going to travel right around the world. It is a health school, and it sounds mad, but at least it impresses the idea upon their minds, and they get elevated and the desire grows. Magic has caused me to travel a good way around the world, and I would like you to do the same. It is a wonderful experience, and if you haven't been, you don't know what you are missing. The very thought of it makes for a healthy mind. No wonder they teach them that way in the school I was telling you about. You can achieve astounding success if you determine to make time. Leave that game of golf with Bill next Saturday, or that housewarming party with the Joneses on Monday. Snap your fingers at a few things like this and make the time for magic and success. What are you willing to to give up and get the wanderlust into your blood do a trip to the nearest seaside resort on your day off and never mind the weather or go to the hills start simply like that if you cultivate the wanderlust bigger ventures will follow but make a move by going somewhere think of it the ticket the train the packing of a suitcase the slamming of a door the escape from the eternal sameness of every day what excitement to be able to say I shall be going away next week what a thrill even if it is to only a little journey, it will mean so much to you. I travel a lot, so I know. It is the prelude, that's the thing. Making a start, making time. It is the stepping stone to foreign travel. Let the hangover go hang and beat it. Beat it to the place you want to go to. And when you have got travel into your blood and under your skin, when it has become a part of you, be sure that through the law of attraction you will draw to you the ways and means for that bigger, better, round-the-world adventure. Now is the appointed time. Never in any age have people had such marvellous chances to see the world as they have today. To get out of the rut into an airplane, a streamlined train with its buffet car or a luxurious motor coach unheard of in the past. And when you have learned magic, you will be going into your own beautiful car. Go and see wonderful places. I was happy then, although I did not realise it at the time. How often have I heard that said? Oh, dozens of times. People look back and sometimes they look forward, but seldom ever do they look at the present moment. Right here, right now. Develop an awareness of everything that goes on in and around you. The given moment. I'll do it tomorrow is the attitude, and it is wrong. People who achieve things in life discipline their time. Nothing is wasted. They make good use of every moment. Others decide to do a thing now, but go and watch television or play tennis instead. Do the thing you have always wanted to do now, or make your plans now, or speak to your subconscious about it now, not tomorrow. You will get a feeling of expectancy. Let your feet dance and not drag yourself wearily along life's cobblestones. Like produces like. Like attracts like. If you are elated with the thought of good things coming soon, in time for you to enjoy them, you will want to dance your way through life today and every day. And like this you attune yourself to the right vibration. You will set in motion the magnetic power that will bring you your wildest dreams. But now is the time to feel the expectancy, not tomorrow or next week, now. Sometimes the reaction of, to your joy and expectancy results in immediate magic, as though things materialize overnight, so to speak. If there is no joy or deep feeling in your life at the moment, the time is wrong to look for a demonstration. Feeling is so very, very important. The feeling of the moment not how you felt yesterday or how you are going to feel tomorrow. 
To make time work magic, you must speed up your feelings. You must be enthusiastic and happy now. You will never have any more time than you have today. It is how you use your 24 hours that counts. You want your car quickly, your house quickly, and the more excited you are at the thought of it, the speedier will it come to you. The Honourable Agnes Ogilvy, who married lovely Princess Alexandra, has often made do with three hours sleep only at night. It is said that he thinks sleeping is more or less a waste of time. Often he is done without any sleep at all when he has a particular busy social and busy programme. But he is a great believer in solitude, particularly in Scotland, where great solitude and great beauty go hand in hand. This busy and most successful personality finds time, makes time, for solitude and thinking. You have to do that. You have to make the time. All fine characters become fine through solitude, silence and stillness. Don't be put off with the thought that you haven't the time. If you have no time to develop the various things which go towards bringing magic out of your mind, you have a leakage somewhere of the precious minutes that make up your day. You are fritting time away and not using it for development. Don't waste any more time brooding over the past and what might have been. No regrets. Don't waste any more time being fearful of the future. Live a day at a time and use those 24 hours wisely. Look cheerfully on each new day, confident that it will be well worth living, that the whole universe has got your back. With Carlyle you will be able to say, Waste not time, here is a whole earth and a whole heaven, and we have eyes to look on them. The proper use of time means having a sense of direction, a sense of purpose. This is where your subconscious mind can be so helpful. You can go into the silence and ask for right direction, and if you listen carefully you will get it, and you will know that it is right. You cannot be really happy if you have no time. Nothing is so tiring as the obsession. I must dot dot dot. Budget your time. Determine that it shall not master you. Here is the attitude a certain author took when writing a bestseller. He taught himself that life would be really grand for him if, at the end of five months, he had most of the things his heart craved for. So he planned and schemed to get them. It would take him five months to write the book. He planned to be alive, yet dead, as it seemed, to everything and everybody for 153 days. How tremendously strange it would seem, but not impossible. Balzac did it. Why shouldn't he? The author of La Vie Prodigoise locked himself in his room with his manuscripts and a coffee pot for days and days, and at the end his room looked like a battlefield, but he attained. Conrad did the same thing. He locked himself in his study, away from the outside world, and he stayed there until he achieved what he set out to do. When he had finished his book, he rightly called it victory. Doesn't matter how hard the tasks you set yourself or how varied, if you know that five months will see you through. 153 days. Well, said the other, if I were dead, people would have to get used to not seeing me, not talking and laughing with me again. They would soon get used to it. Five months. No more incessant chattering in cafes and public houses. No more silly knocks upon the door to ask if I wanted a vacuum cleaner scribbling pad and if not why not he said to himself i shall not be at home any more to anyone no more invitations to lunch to tea and that billiards match to cocktails or to dinner no more dancing to gay music under romantic shaded lights no more golf what are you willing to give up no more wondering what clothes i shall put on today or why or when i would like my bath he told himself that nothing like this would matter any more these 153 days of his five months plan to write a bestseller would be his very own. He would be free. No use anyone wanting to come and look at the curtain rods. No one daring to ask what he wanted for lunch. He would be able to say to himself, Nobody can ring me up, for I do not exist any more to anybody. Cars would come and cars would go, but none of them would bear friends to his flat. He was going to be out. He was going to cut himself off entirely from civilization and achieve. Time and silence. Time and silence and peace would belong to him, and in them he would build, 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 and create, create, create.
and it is the same with men and women. They grow rich and successful, not in the rush and hustle of life as it is today, but in the dark and quiet interludes, whether the interludes be five years or five months or five minutes. The author, with the idea, smiled at the thought that after breakfast he would be able to lounge in his dressing gown with a cigarette and smile and smile at nothing. Nobody could call him an idiot. They would not be there to see him, and on the last day of his five months plan, the world would be his oyster. His book, as you will have guessed, achieved fantastic sales. He had made time. Where there's a will, there's a way. You too can make time. I have done this sort of thing for short periods when I have wanted to do some particular magic that needed thought and solitude. We say we will keep this or that engagement if we have time. We will do this thing or that thing if we can manage it. Yes, we can keep the appointment, can do the job, and we know it. How often do you hear people say that they have been too busy to write, that they have had no time for friendship, can't be bothered to visit, to telephone, to say thank you on a postcard, to congratulate. No time, too tired, too busy, can't be bothered. But are they so much more busy than other people? I think not. And there are those who waste time. There are people who actually go to bed at half past nine every night because they complain there is nothing else to do. In one of his books, J.B. Priestley emphasizes the folly of, of it. His heroine compares London with her gloomy midland town and she says, Where I live, everybody always wants to go home. We're frightened of going home to bed. We set out to make an evening of it, hoping to meet on the way the immortal realities, love, friendship, laughter, beauty, wisdom. If not one of them turns up, we stay on and on in the hope that they will. To go home to bed is to acknowledge defeat. This is perfectly true. If one goes to bed because one thinks there is nothing else to do, one is a complete failure. You turn your back on magic. Everywhere you come up against people who are turning their backs upon magic. They drink, play cards, dance to the radio, shuffle the cards again, knit, in fact anything for the sake of something to do. Anything to kill time, the stuff that life is made of. Never kill time. This is fatal to magic. Demand that every minute may mean something wonderful to you and yours. Life at its longest is but hail and farewell. Let the hail be hearty, and the farewell without regrets. Nancy J. wrote a good story that gives you a strong sense of time. It was of a young man and girl, very much in love, but the young man did not want to marry just yet. There was plenty of time. It was not that Mickey could not afford to marry. It was not that he did not love her. We are plenty young, he said. Then something happened. It was that night when he said, I'm coming in to say good night. We'll have to go through the shop, Mary said. She was going to turn on the light, but who wants light, he said. Then, as they were saying good night in each other's arms, the light in the neighbor's window was turned on, and Mickey started suddenly. He saw, standing one above the other, some tall, some short, all poignant with their unmistakable shape, rows of finished and unfinished coffins. Mary, he said, you've got to marry me very soon. I like that story, it's so natural, and it brought home to Mickey the sense of time. Another day gone and nothing done yet. Soon all the days will be gone and nothing ever will be done. You have lived, you have eaten, drank, loved, bathed, suffered, talked, danced in the night and rejoiced in the dawn, but still you are behind with time. The day is gone. You long fiercely to return to yesterday. You would behave differently. You would not waste a single moment. Suddenly you are conscious of an intense life hurrying swiftly to an end. The clock is ticking its way towards eternity. You cannot get back what has gone. Panic seizes you. You are always going to enjoy tomorrow, next week, next year, never today. This little extract from Rayner's Barton's short story, He Was Time's Fool, is reminiscent of nearly everybody today. Suddenly, Skullson realised his bondage and saw for the first time the ropes that had bound him. Yet he had made a success of things. No one would deny that. He would leave a hundred thousand behind him when he went. Yes, he 
He'd made plenty of money. And how had he made it? Through seeing his watch kept right time, and that he himself kept right time with his watch. Skullson raised his head and looked about him. All those books that had been there, no time to read. What was there inside them? What had he missed? There, beyond those closed curtains, lay his garden, a beautiful place, and he hardly ever saw it. There was no time. No time for anything but the tasks he had set himself to fulfil. Time had taken his life and had worked it to death. Mr. Skullson stood up with a jerk. To death. And so the story goes on. You can work yourself to death and never know the magic that is happening every day all around you. We all know the wife who says, John, why won't you be like the other husbands? It's always work, work, work. Don't I count for anything in your life? And we all know the husband who answers back, My dear, when I make my pile, we'll take a cruise around the world. Some day when I make my pile, but some day never comes. Our motto has been, leave it. You pretend that if only conditions were different, you would live. You would have fun. But you do not make the effort to alter the conditions. You say with the crowd, you are going to, and you get nowhere and see nothing. You pretend that if only conditions were different you would live. You would have fun, but you do not make the efforts to alter the conditions. You say with the crowd you are going to do this and you are going to do that, and you get nowhere and see nothing. You have not had the time to look at the moon, to dress for dinner, to do a show, to write bless you on a card and send it to a friend. You have been busy, too busy, trying to make your fortune. Yet by a little daily meditation you can learn magic and get your pile without having to make a slave of yourself, without having to work hard. Is the word fun foreign to you? Have you acquired a warped conscience which makes you guilty unless you work as hard as your grandparents? This is fatal to happiness. This is wrong. Dozens of new discoveries have been made since our grandparents' day and now there is no need to slave incessantly from morning till night, week in and week out with no bright spots, no romance, no adventure. We are living in the air age, the age where mind is being recognized for what it is. When you are able to work magic and get all the things you want through the power of your mind, you will not need to slave. They will come to you, they will come to you without slavery. What you have got to do is get your mind right, get the right attitude. Think and grow rich. It's the famous book by the whole Ian Hill. 99% is the thinking, vibration, feeling. 1% is the point, 1% even, is the how. Don't worry about the how. You must organize your life so that there is time for magic, so that you have energy to live as well as earn a living. And again, I repeat, you must make time. You must change the you that existed before you picked up this book. There must be a new you, to, new you to correspond with what it takes to work magic. It's no use saying you will start in the spring and then get on with your work in the same old way, slogging along with the idea that in the spring you will change. Study and become the magician I want you to become. No, the time for action is now. Visualize yourself as a person who always does things now. Make up your mind to be that sort of a person. Then you will find that you never waste a moment because there is no delayed action. Everything you want to do, you do now, or at least make the plans for it now. You will feel a warm glow around your heart when you take that attitude. Create a new life pattern. Remember what you have already learned about magic and find time to continue to master the whole secret. Making time for the study of magic is absolutely essential. If you would be radiantly fit and strong, Happy, wealthy and alive, it takes time to become a musician, magician, and a musician, good one. Lots of time, you must reflect. You must reflect upon the problem of getting time for magic, upon the happiness and success you will get from it, upon the direction you are going and what life is giving you. The less you reflect, the less chance you have of ever becoming a magician. Magic is not for you. Too difficult, too much to do. It is for you, I passionately repeat, it is for you. Throw away the idea, and you throw away the most precious suggestion that was ever offered to you. Make time and try it. People get in a rut, they are afraid to start something new. Thousands may even now be standing on the brink of a pit they have dug with their own thoughts, words and actions. 
for every one of them there may be a too late. Don't get in a rut. Don't become old before you have tasted the full joy of magic. Resolve now to do the things you have half planned for weeks past, and refuse to be deterred by the something that always turns up. As the poem says, time goes, you say, ah no, alas, time stays, we go. I forget who said that, but you see what I mean. Time is a precious thing, and you must make the most of it. Never be put off with the thought that you haven't the time. Magic is robbed of much of its power while you hold back from living. It comes easier and quicker when you are excited and happy about life. What has passed when time has passed away? Opportunity has passed. How are you going to make the most of the years that are given to you? That is the most vital problem today. Few people realize the value of their time until they come to the end of it. Then in desperation they think, just 15 minutes more please. They will get everything, they will give everything they possess to get one year more, one month more, five minutes more, or another golden hour set with sixty diamond minutes. Every twenty-four minutes you can climb to the stars, or you can slide down into your own particularly hell, particular hell. This book is to help you climb to the stars, and the first essential is to put a value on time. I am very time conscious, my magician has to be. The studio clock is ticking round the last minute before I go on the air. My mind is a long way from the brilliantly lit scene of a half a dozen stages all in one studio, the electronic miracle of television. I am thinking quietly of the millions of families who will be mentally linked with me in a few minutes. I am wondering how they will react to magic which knows no barrier of time or distance. Then I come out to the autograph seekers, the crowds who mob me for mementos, who want only to grip me by the hand or smile and thank you for the wonderful performance. It had been worth it. It wasn't a waste of time. Someone wants to do magic. Someone wants to read minds. Someone wants to see into the future. I have given them a glimpse of this magic. No, I never waste time.